Good morning, everybody. Are you ready to come out? Oh, this is so exciting. Okay. Are there some guys in here? Oh, hello. Hey, guys, you're my secret stash. I'm so excited that you're hatching. Oh, it looks like you have more guys to hatch, but it looks like there's a lot of you. Hello, good morning. Good morning, guys. Yay, I finally get to keep some chicks. I'm hatching for everybody else, but now I get to keep some of you guys. Hello. I'm going to close you back up because I don't think you're quite done. What's the matter? Why is everybody, why is everybody crying? What's wrong? How come everybody's here? Is something happening? Oh, are you guys just sad? Are you guys all sad because, oh, because our 21 day adventure is over? Well, you know, it's not over. It's, we'll have another adventure. Yes, we will. Roost high, nest low. What that means is you want to have their roosting bar higher than their nesting box where they lay their eggs. Now the height of the roosting bar is going to depend on the kind of birds that you have and the size of birds you have because birds this size, well enormous size, can't have a bar that's very tall because when they jump down it's too hard on their bodies. In fact I could probably drop this bar down a little bit but if you have tiny little banties or small birds, it can be much higher. And what you use for a, a roosting bar, you could use a two by four or you could use a branch from the forest, but make sure it's wide and big. Um, the biggest mistake people make is using tiny little dowels that they think that the, that the birds have to wrap their, their little feet around. But remember when they do that, it makes it very hard to stay warm in the winter. Whereas if you have a bigger bar like this, where they, their feet can just sit on top, then they can have their whole bodies come around their feet and keep their feet warm. And, and the nest low, I think that must have something to do with the chicken's instinct. When they have babies, they would need the babies to be really close to the ground so they could get out of the nest. So I think that's where the nest low comes from. So roost higher and nest low. That's what you want to have in your chicken coops. Here are the crushed eggshells that we crushed yesterday that we've been saving. And we're going to just add that to the feed today. Stir it around. The chickens will not recognize that these are eggshells because they're crushed so small but it's going to add some much needed calcium to their diet. Is that good guys? Sometimes people ask why we have llamas. Well we have them for a number of reasons. One of them is as guardian animals to protect the sheep, the chickens, the goats and they always notify us when there's a predator around with a special <laughs> llama call like that. Every one of them has a very distinctive call. Now that was the alpaca actually. Let's see if we can hear it again. And as soon as they make that call, if the dogs didn't already know there was a predator there, the dogs start to bark. And usually that's enough to scare the predator away. There's a coyote right on the other side of the fence and the animals are going right to the llamas because they know that the llamas will keep them safe. It's kind of scary because they're right at the fence and they don't usually come that close. The sheep are literally underneath Phil. They know that if they stay close to Phil that they're going to be safe. You guys stay close, okay? That coyote's way too close for comfort. This is not just the chickens that roll in the sand. The llamas like to roll too. And here goes Phil. I mean, he looks pretty funny when he rolls. Oh, <laughs> say excuse me. Oh, and there goes Ella. <laughs> She's going to roll. And the dogs do not like it when they roll. Oh, 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 oh. 
<laughs> You're even dirtier than you were before. Phil, you need a haircut. Yes. Yes, you do. Look at how dreadful you... Okay, sorry, not dreadful. But look, you need a haircut quite badly. Piper, you're going to go first. But Phil, you're next. Why does everybody look so sad? It's okay. We'll have lots more adventures. Yeah. One adventure ends and the next begins, right? Right. I wonder if everybody knows you should always lay your hand flat when you're feeding a horse. Because your fingers could look a little bit like carrots. And if you put your hand flat, then she can't bite your fingers. It's time to take the chicks out of the incubator. I'm going to take them out one by one. I'm going to put them in a little box. And when I have them all out, I'm going to put them under their heat lamp and teach them how to eat and drink. There's a lot of you in here. Hi guys. Okay, I'm gonna pick you up, take you over to the water, I'm gonna dip your beak in, and then I'll put you under the light. Dip your beak in, put you under the light. So the chicks are pretty messy, and as you can see, they've taken the food out of the food dish and they've spread all over the place which is fine for a day or two but after that you could start uh, potentially end up end up having some oh so this is the babysitter and she was hatched about two months ago and she has stayed with every batch of chicks we've had for the last two months and she teaches them how to eat and where to drink and she even sometimes sits down on them. Okay, I don't even know what to say about this. This makes broody hens number seven, eight, and nine. Three of you in the same box. Okay, this is out of control. Out of control broody hens. But all kidding aside, it, it does seem that as soon as one goes broody, they all follow. And I don't know if they're copying if they all just get that feeling they want to be mums at the same time. But nine hens is, it's just too many. <laughs> this is too many, guys. Okay, you know how you always hear that llamas spit? Well, llamas do spit, but it's their way of communicating when they're not very happy about something. So right now, I put a little bit of food out, and Phil doesn't want to share it with Peanut, and Peanut wants some. And Piper wants some, and, well, there's a lot of spitting going on. But llamas don't usually spit at people for no reason. They usually spit at people if they're unhappy about something, and they're trying to communicate that they're unhappy because they don't have words to communicate. So Phil is unhappy right now because other people are looking at his food. So I just put the halter on Piper and told her she was gonna get a haircut and she sat down and she won't get up. Okay, well I finally got her up. So now I have to brush her because I have to take out all the sticks and the hay and all the stuff that she collects over the season. You okay? You okay? Yeah. Gotta get all that out because the cleaner the fiber is, the easier it is to work with because we're going to try spinning right off of her. Okay. You could do that. That would be fine. You? You'd rather sit down? Okay. We'll sit down.
this is right off of the llama. And that's why it's so important to brush it out and to get all the bits out because it makes it very hard to spin with all these bits in there. Her fiber is absolutely beautiful. It's so soft. In you go. Benji, not you either. Just the llama. Are you ready to go? Well, when you don't own a trailer and you need your llama to be sheared, then they have to go in the van. So the reason we have to take Phil somewhere is because he really, well, he doesn't like being sheared and we need a professional to do it. Can you get out? That is a lot of hair, Phil. Nice haircut, buddy. All right, we have kind of a big problem right now because we just had our power go out. And I have about 11 chicks here and the heat lamp, of course, is not working because the power is out. Now, I always keep an older chick in the enclosure um, to try to teach the younger ones how to eat and drink. And, oh, and there comes the power. Look at that. But when I came into the the garage a few minutes ago, all, I think there's 11 chicks in here. All 11 chicks were underneath her. And, you know, I think we could learn a lot from chickens because she just jumped right in and helped keep these babies warm. And some of them, as you can see, this one right here, he just hatched. So they wouldn't be able to survive very long without heat. And you, Lacey, you saved the day. So good job. Have you ever cracked open an egg and found some little red spots on it? And freak out because you think that's a baby chick growing? Well, 99% of the time, it's probably not because the eggs that you're buying come from the grocery store and most of those farms don't have roosters. All eggs, fertilized or not, contain tiny blood vessels that anchor the yolk inside the egg. If the egg was fertilized and you incubated, the blood vessels would then deliver nutrients to the growing chick embryo. Now this little bit here is not a blood spot. It's actually called a meal spot. And what it's different from a blood spot in that it's actually just a piece of tissue that's picked up by the egg when it's passing through the oviduct. Now, whether it's a blood spot or a meal spot, they kind of look gross but they're totally 100% okay to eat. But if you'd rather not eat them, then I'm sure your dog would be happy to have eggs for lunch. Hey Lacey, I just want to thank you so much for looking after all those babies when the power went out. We're just going for a little walk because you really haven't spent much time outside, have you? No, you're still inside looking after all those babies babysitting. But you're such a good girl. Pretty soon you're going to get to come live outside. You've never even... I know, you're too big to be inside. You ready for the big outside world? Just about. Do you want to have a little bit of outside time in the grass? Alright, should we put you on the grass? You don't want to go in the grass? Well, I think somebody wants to say hi to you. Oh, yes. She's such a brave girl. She looked after all those babies. Yes, she did. All by herself. What a good girl. Well, the chicks have finally hatched and we can take a closer look at them out in the daylight. It's kind of hard to see them in those red lights. Well, it's run, one thing to read all about chicks in a book and look at pictures, but it's quite another to actually be able to see right on the very end of that little guy's beak is the egg tooth. And that is the little thing that they use to tap and to crack out of a shell. And it is a warm day out, but it is definitely not 100 degrees. So this is, we wouldn't be able to leave them out for very long and we need to watch them carefully for signs that they're unhappy. Like this one trying to break out of chicky jail. So the signs would be loud screaming, closing their eyes, kind of falling asleep. Um, and you couldn't leave them out by themselves. I mean, we do have a guard right here. Benji, you're a good chicky guard but they wouldn't last a minute out here by themselves. A crow would swoop down and take them. Uh, a cat might get them, all sorts of things would happen. But it's kind of neat to see them outside in the daylight because you can see their coloring a lot better. Well, we can't keep them out for too long because chicks have no way of regulating their temperature. They have no way of keeping themselves warm. 
And until they grow feathers, they, they will need to have a regular source of heat. So, so here we have some of the babies. And you'll see that they have absolutely no feathers yet. In fact, all they are is puff. And if you wondered how chickens can keep themselves warm, well, they need feathers to do that. And Lacey's going to show us her beautiful feathers. And so what they do is they take their feathers and they kind of poof them up. And they create like a little heat barrier. So if you don't have feathers, like the chicks, they can't create that heat barrier. And without heat, well, well, they just wouldn't survive. There you go. That's better, because I'm 100 degrees. So this is one of the last little ones in the incubator to hatch. And he, he did hatch, but he was just laying on the ground. So I went in to, to check on him, and he had the membrane stuck all over him so that he couldn't even open his wings up. So I'm putting him in a little warm water bath to try to take off that membrane. And his head is actually covered. It's so sticky that he can't even open his eyes. So I'm gonna very carefully um, put some more warm water on him. But while I have him out, I thought that I would show, he has a great big belly. And that will, well, it's, it's full of egg yolk and it will, feed him for the next couple of days so he could actually go a couple of days without food um, in a couple of days that tummy will he will have absorbed the rest of that yolk um, and the other thing about him is because he had such a trouble hatching his little feet aren't working all that great yet and they need to use their feet to get out of the shell and it strengthens their legs and um, I think this guy's going to be okay but I do need to give him a little bit more of a warm bath to get him cleaned up. And as soon as I have the warm water on him, he stops crying, of course, because it's nice and warm. It's like a nice warm bath. Buddy, you're going to be okay. We'll get that goop off you. You couldn't even open your wings, could you? Well, not that there was ever any doubt, but this just proves, hands down, that the very best incubator is the mummy incubator. How are you looking? Those are some pretty fancy duds. Look at you guys. I've always wanted to do this. I know you're not toys, but it's just a little photo shoot. It's just hanging out with our new fancy dresses on. Oh my goodness, your dress came off. Let's get you a new one. Let's get you a new one. Huh. There you go, and your dress came off too. There you go. That's pretty fancy. That's pretty fancy. She wants this one for you. And then... <laughs> well, that's it. Our 21 day chick hatching adventure is finished. I hope you learned a lot and I hope you had fun. So this adventure is over. So now it's time for the next adventure to begin.